Today we're taking a look at the movie Loverboy, which is definitely a late 80s classic and another one that I used to watch a lot with my brother when we were younger. And there's actually a line in that movie that we used to quote all the time. Hi, I'm Brad. Frosty beverage? No, Brad. No frosty beverage. Now, this movie also has a ton of big names in it. I mean, Patrick Dempsey, Kirstie Alley, Carrie Fisher, E.G. Daly, Vic Tabak, Kate Jackson. Uh, there's probably people that I miss. There's a lot of famous people in this movie. Uh, oh, Nancy Vallon, who you would know as Nurse Jennifer from Saved by the Bell. Uh, anyways, today we're going to be checking out these locations. So, if you're ready, let's go see what we can find. Okay, first of all, anytime you've got a movie that starts with animated credits like this, you're usually in for a treat. So, the movie begins with Randy Bodick away at college getting ready for a romantic evening with his girlfriend, and this is pretty much what my teenage years looked like. But anyways, Randy goes home for the summer, his parents find out how bad his grades are, and his dad goes ballistic. So after Randy's parents find out how bad he's doing in school, his dad says, that's it, you're not going back to school, you're getting a job. So Randy gets a job at Senior Pizza, and this building right behind me across the street, that was Senior Pizza. Now the building looks completely different. Stuff has been added to the front, stuff has been added to the back, the inside has been completely remodeled, but we're gonna head over there and see what we can match up. Now this is the shot that those two boys would have had looking over the counter into the kitchen as Randy takes their order. You can see everything here has been remodeled, but that open kitchen that you can see behind Randy, that's still here. Again, it's just been updated and remodeled. Looks a lot different. So the counter has now been extended and the window that you see behind the two girls in this shot, that's now a walk-up window. You can see it right here. Now one thing that does still exist is every time Randy goes to make a delivery, he walks through a door that goes into the back part of the kitchen, and that's still here. Again, this entire restaurant's been updated, but there's still a few things you can match up, and this is definitely not the last time we're gonna see this location. So Randy's out making a pizza delivery, and we see him coming down this street. He then comes to a stop at the corner, and that's when he sees the girl crossing the street. She stops, because she has a problem with her shoe, and you can definitely see these buildings and this larger building as well. Now when she stops to fix her shoe, they have a brief interaction, uh, he smiles at her, she gives him a really flirty smile and he figures, wow, she must really like me. So he rounds the corner and comes up onto the curb and he sees her walk into this building. Out the outside of this building still looks pretty similar, the inside looks nothing like it did, the entrance to the building has now been moved to the corner, but this is where those doors were that you see Randy right outside of, fumbling around, changing out of his uniform. Now you'll notice that as soon as he walks into the store, he walks up a set of steps and then straight to the back where all of the clothing is hanging. So he walks in and right about here is where those steps would have been. And then right back there is where all the clothing was. You can see it looks completely different. No more steps but somewhere right back here is where he stands talking to the girl that he saw outside. She doesn't recognize him. She says the guy that I saw outside had a mustache. She doesn't realize that that gigantic mustache is fake. But then once he puts on the huge novelty mustache, she recognizes him and she says, you know, oh, you're just a boy, I can't date you. But not to worry, that's when Randy meets Alex, who he doesn't realize at the time is the owner of the store, and he also doesn't realize that she's about to change his life. Randy's boss tells him he has two deliveries to make at the same time, one to Beverly Hills and one to Costa Mesa, which makes no sense. I sure hope they like eating ice cold, disgusting pizza. Of course, all of those pizzas were ordered by Alex. The first one is to the resort that she's staying in, supposedly in Beverly Hills. In real life, it's a hotel in Oxnard, California, pretty far from Beverly Hills. We see Randy's pizza vehicle approaching the hotel as the camera zooms in towards this fountain before moving to the left and filming right through this opening, showing Randy pulling up to the front of the hotel. 
Randy then hands his keys over to the valet and then awkwardly moves past some guests to head inside the hotel and make his delivery. He heads down a hall near the hotel lobby. Now check out that pink couch and teal carpet. I was definitely disappointed to arrive and find out the couch and carpet were long gone. Randy walks through the pool area, still trying to find the room so he can make his delivery as a couple of muscle men with mullets walk by. Now, not too much has changed out here by the pool. However, some of the rocks on this waterfall have changed. Randy finally finds the room, building five, room 202. Now, the numbers on the rooms have changed, but the way I was able to pinpoint it is the view over here with the glass door and the railing and that building. You can see right here, glass door, railing there's that building with the slanted roof all of that still matches up so again the numbers on the rooms have changed again in the movie it was building five room 202 it's now the escape building room 531 pretty different so after his visit with alex randy is so happy he comes dancing out of the room hops over the railing and onto the gazebo you can see that railing that he hops over is still exactly the same however for whatever reason that gazebo has been replaced. But he hops down onto the ground, you can see the waterfall. He then walks by the pool, hopping onto each lounge chair before then leaping into the pool. He would have walked along right here, jumping on all of those lounge chairs, of course. The chairs have been replaced. He then leaps into the pool, and you can see that section of building when he does. Now we only see the outside of Randy's house one time when Tony goes to his house to deliver the suit. Now the problem is Randy's house is located right here inside of this gated community. And I know, trust me, it's so frustrating knowing that the house is right there on the other side of those gates. I'm so close to it, but I can't actually drive up and see the house. So we're just gonna have to take a look at Google Maps you can kind of see the house. I mean, it's hard to see because you don't really see a lot of the house in the movie. Uh, you really just see the front entrance and the driveway. And again, I know it's, it's, it's so frustrating to be standing here and not see it. But unfortunately, this is, uh, this is the best we can do. After getting another call for more pizza with extra anchovies, Randy takes a drive with Alex and her Ferrari down Pacific Coast Highway. Now this is the first shot we get of them driving down PCH. The camera then cuts to them driving away from Point Magoo Rock, which is just north of where they were driving a few moments ago. Randy and Sal are hanging out in the back of Senior Pizza, and Randy's telling Sal that he just can't do it anymore. And Suzuki Samurai. Uh, like I said, stuff has been added to the front of this building, stuff has been added to the back of the building. This entire outdoor eating section, this wasn't here. They've also added uh, some structures onto the building. So it looks a lot different back here, but right over here is where they were standing, and right over here is where that Suzuki Samurai was. Now obviously, I would have loved to find the house where Kirstie Alley's character lives, along with the house where Harry and Kayoko live but you don't really see too much of the outside of these houses, so there weren't really any clues to help me find them. Now, we only see this house for just a few seconds in the movie. We see Randy dancing up the front steps. This is, of course, where he uh, comes to deliver the pizza, not realizing it's a legitimate pizza delivery until he hears the mom call for her kids to let them know that the pizza has arrived, and that's when he realizes it's legit, and he goes running out of the house. Now, the problem is, yep, we're right back at that same gated community. The house is actually just a few doors down from Randy's house. So once again, we have to take a look at Google Maps and you can kind of see right there is those front steps that he's dancing up. And I know, again, so frustrating, but it's the best we can do. Both those houses inside this gated community. Now this is another house that we only see for a couple of seconds in the movie. We see Randy's vehicle parked right in front and this is the home where Carrie Fisher's character lived with her uh, bodybuilder husband. And like I said, Randy's car is parked right there in front. Uh, the home has been remodeled significantly and doesn't really look like it did in the movie. Uh, but yeah, like I said, we see Randy's car parked right here in front and then cuts to inside the house and she's showing Randy the pictures that she's taken of her husband's muscles uh, I don't know if they filmed inside the house. I believe they did, but I can't say for sure. Uh, we do see this house 
one more time a bit later in the movie. Now there is an extremely quick scene with Harry and Dr. Palmer speeding down the street in the Rolls Royce. And even though we only see it for like, literally a couple of seconds, I do believe that scene was right here on this road behind me. I was able to match up a few different things. So it's a two lane street that runs right alongside a park and has the same style fence like what we see in the movie. It also has a lamppost in the same spot along with these trees. Now there was a lot more of them back in the 80s, but those trees and also all of these palm trees back here can be seen in the movie. It's also a T-shaped intersection, which you can see a sign for in the movie. It would have been right here just to the left of the lamppost. It's no longer there. Uh, also, these mountains down here seem to match up. And last but not least, on the right side of the street, you can see in the movie that it's a corner and it's cement, grass, cement, grass. And this is the only intersection that I could find around here with that same configuration. Also the parking meters, just pretty much everything here seems to match up. So I'm pretty sure this is that stretch of road. Harry and Dr. Palmer end up thinking that it's the personal trainer that their wives are having an affair with. So they head over to his house to pay him a little visit. So Harry pulls up and he parks his Rolls Royce right here and you get a really good shot of the house across the street, but it also has been remodeled pretty heavily. Looks similar, but not the same. So then Harry and Dr. Palmer walk up to the front door, and again, all of this has been remodeled. It looks completely different, uh, but they knock on the front door, and then Harry ends up breaking out one of the panes of glass, and uh, that's when the personal trainer ends up walking up, and he sees them breaking out the glass, and he thinks, that they're robbing him, uh, they turn around and see him and they think that you know he's gonna rip their heads off, but instead he, he just starts crying. He uh, breaks down into tears because uh, his wife's having an affair, he thinks that they're robbing him and everything's just going wrong and then they end up feeling bad for him. So all of that happens right here in front of the house, but again, things look a lot different. Randy heads back to Senior Pizza to tell Sal that he just can't do it anymore. He comes in through that driveway. The buildings across the way have completely changed. He parks his vehicle right here behind Senior Pizza and he passes by Tony on his way inside. Tony would have been standing right here just to the left of the back door. Now once Randy's inside, Sal convinces him just one more delivery is all you have to do. So I just got to the motel that Randy's mom checks into and to my surprise, the entire motel is gated off I'm not sure if they're getting ready to tear it down or if they're just remodeling it, but the gate is open, so I'm gonna see if I can check it out. Now here's the motel's front office. This is where Randy's mom checks in when she first arrives to the motel. Now the shot that we get in the movie, the camera is a little bit more to the left, but there's currently this large storage bin here right now, so I can't really get over there. But the office still looks just like it did in the movie. Of course, uh, except for the lack of uh, windows and doors, but other than that, it looks exactly the same, at least for now. After Diane checks in, she heads to her room and walks right by the pool, and right there is where the pool was, or is, it's still there, it's just currently covered, and a couple of the workers were just telling me uh, they don't think they're getting rid of the pool, they just have it covered right now, and they're not tearing down the motel, they're just remodeling it, but right under there is where the pool is. You can see on the ground, that's the five foot deep section. This is also where Randy pulls up. He parks right in front of the pool, a little bit more to the right, pretty much where that porta potty is. Randy heads to the room, also walking by the pool, but the room that they use for the movie is actually in the building to the left. I guess they just wanted to show the pool. Meanwhile, back at Senior Pizza, Jennifer shows up. Oh no! Sal tells her that Randy's out making a delivery and that she should just have a seat and wait for him. But then Jory shows up and he sees Jennifer sitting in a booth by herself and he decides to make a move on her. Now no longer a booth, but that's where she was sitting. Meanwhile, back at the motel, Randy just misses his mom as he's walking up the stairs and she's headed to get ice. Now notice he goes straight up the steps and then to the room to the right. He walks up those stairs and then that's his mom's room right there. Now this is right about the time that the construction site foreman kicked me out of the motel, but he was actually extremely nice about it. 
he actually apologized for having to ask me to leave, so not mad at him at all, but there was still one more thing that I wanted to check out. So once Randy realizes that it's his mom in the motel, he tries to jump out the bathroom window. I notice the window is in between these two lines. Again, their room was right here, so that means the window would have been right over here. Notice those two lines right there, but it looks like the window has since been covered up. Now Randy tells the little girl to put her pool toy underneath the window and he jumps down onto it. Again, window right here, pool toy would have been right down here. He lands on it and somehow doesn't break both of his legs. He then gets up and he runs over to his vehicle, which again was parked right over here, pretty much where those porta potties are. And of course, this is also the same place where Tony comes running out of the pool area and jumps on his scooter. Wait a minute, what's Tony doing at the motel? Well, once Randy finds out that it's his mom at the motel, he rushes back to Senior Pizza, where Tony is standing right here talking to a girl in a car. Randy gets out and tells Tony, you gotta deliver these pizzas to the motel and tell the lady that there's no more anchovies. We're all done serving anchovies. Randy then runs inside of Senior Pizza and Tony's telling him, but we still have plenty of anchovies. And behind him, you can see the girl that he was talking to. She was parked right in front of this wall. So Jory's telling Jenny about everything Randy's been up to, and he brings her to a scenic overlook to do that. And for some reason, she doesn't at all think it's strange that he would bring her to a scenic overlook to have that conversation. But right here in front of me, this is where his car is parked. Now this is the same scenic overlook that was used in Greece, and I'm also pretty sure it's the same overlook that was used earlier in Loverboy when he sees Randy with the older woman. He of course makes a move on Jenny. She then grabs the shifter and pulls it into his private parts and jumps out of the car and goes running out onto Mulholland. So she goes running out onto the road and luckily there's a car coming around the curve and it stops and picks her up. And when it does, you see this utility pole and these utility poles and that sign for the school, which has since been updated to a newer sign, but it's still there. I just still can't believe that I was able to figure out this location. And if you really took the time, you could definitely match up some of these houses down here. So Jenny makes it back to Senior Pizza and her and Randy are talking when Jory shows up. Him and Randy begin to fight and they decide to take it out back. They come out of the front of the building. Unfortunately, that payphone is no longer there. They then walk down the side of the building all of this looks a lot different. And again, they've since added a uh, outdoor eating area here in the back, but right here is where that truck would have been that they throw their jackets onto. Now, just as they're about to fight, the three husbands show up and they're about to beat up Randy, but then Harry steps in and he says, wait a minute, I know this kid. This is Randy Bodick, this can't be the kid. This is a mistake. So Randy and Jenny start to sneak off and that's when Jory jumps up and opens his big mouth and Suzuki Samurai behind him. And notice that door to the left. There's that door. Suzuki would have been parked right over here. This is where Jory was standing. So they assume that Jory must be the delivery boy and they proceed to beat the snot out of him while Randy and Jenny drive off. They go out of this driveway and you can see these houses over here, but they're now pretty well covered. And while they're driving away, the three husbands are loading Jory in the back of Harry's Rolls Royce, which was parked right over here. So Randy's mom, Diane, is racing to her anniversary party, and she notices that Tony is following behind her on the scooter. He's confessing his love for her. Now uh, they're coming down Ocean Park Boulevard. You can see this building behind him. And when Diane looks in the mirror, you can see this house up here on the hill pretty clearly. Now uh, the house is still there, but it's completely covered by these trees now. At the last minute, Diane cuts to the right and heads up this ramp, and Tony continues underneath the bridge. And when Diane gets to the top of the ramp, she hangs a right on this street, and you can see this house on the corner. This is the same house that you could see when she was looking in the mirror, and when she passes by the house, you can see a fence, and part of that fence is still there. It's just a different color. Now, unfortunately, it looks like this house is maybe gonna be torn down soon. It's fenced off. 
Now, like I said, Tony continues under the bridge. He then flips a U-turn and comes up the ramp in the wrong direction. And he's riding right here, dodging the cars. And when he's doing that, you can see this house right here. And then when the camera's shooting in the other direction, kind of giving Tony's point of view, you can see this house over here. Also, sadly, looks like this one is maybe gonna be torn down soon. So after Randy narrowly escapes getting beaten up by the three husbands, he brings Jenny somewhere quiet to come clean and tell her what's been going on. And this is where he brings her. They're sitting and talking in the senior pizza vehicle, which would have been parked somewhere right here in front of me. Uh, things have changed up here a bit. Some of the trees are gone. They've since added this fence that wasn't here at the time. And all of those wooden posts that you see in the movie, those have been replaced by these rocks. Now that actually happened just a couple of years ago. If you look on uh, Google Maps, you can still see those wooden posts, but they've since replaced them with these rocks. Personally, I think the wooden posts look better, but that's just my opinion. So he's explaining everything to her. It doesn't go too well. And she says, you know what? Just take me to the bus station. He then backs up the vehicle and they head out that driveway over there. Now, like I said, some of the trees are gone, but you can definitely see this tree in the movie. And then also, I don't know how well my camera is gonna pick it up, but right across the road, you can see this as well. And I also just noticed this sign across the street, letting you know that the road curves to the right and to go 15 miles an hour on the curve, you can see that sign in the movie. Same sign, same location. I also think possibly this tree can be seen in the movie. Pretty sure that's the same tree. Now the grand finale of the movie takes place at the Bodex anniversary party, which was located at Tiki Joe's restaurant. And this building right behind me, this was Tiki Joe's. Now, unfortunately though, about, I don't know, maybe seven or eight years ago, the entire building was remodeled. Now up until that point, it still resembled Tiki Joe's. It now looks nothing like it did in the movie, but this is the building. And right over here, this is the parking lot that Randy's mom comes pulling into. There was the Tiki Joe's sign over here. And when she pulls into the parking lot, you can see these boats behind her. I mean, probably not the same boats, but you can see a bunch of boats in the background. And right about the same time, Randy comes pulling up and parks the Senior Pizza Jeep right here and you can see the hotel in the background. That also has been remodeled and doesn't really look the same. Right here is where Randy stood at the back of his Jeep, changing clothes while all of the party guests walk by. And again, all of those rocks and wooden posts, unfortunately, all of that is gone. Even that path that they're running on when they're going into the building, all of that has been enclosed. That no longer exists. Now, the restaurant's not even open, so we can't even go inside, but Based on what we see on the outside, I think it's pretty safe to say that the inside no longer matches with what we see in the movie. So Tony shows up, the uh, three husbands show up, there's the big fight inside the restaurant. They end up pushing the piano out of the window and it falls on the cop car and all of that happened right here on the side of the building. There was a, uh, a little deck that's no longer there. This wall right here has been added. Uh, but this is where it happens. The police car comes from down this way and stops right over here. They push the uh, piano out of, not exactly sure which window because everything here has been changed, but they push the piano out and it lands on top of the police car. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. And you know what? I think we did pretty good. We found more locations than I thought we would. I would have liked to find some more of those houses where he delivers the pizzas to, but those are kind of hard. You know, you don't see a lot of those houses. So again, I think we did pretty good. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.